Towards a Spiritualized Society, Oroville, an Experiment in Prefigurative Utopianism. Doctoral Thesis by Suryamai Ashvini, Clarence Smith. Chapter 4 Understanding Oroville as a Utopian Community. Quote, Utopias are often only premature realities. Alphonse de Lamartine. In this thesis, I examine Oroville through a unique theoretical lens that combines radically reformulated current understandings of utopian practice with the concept of prefiguration. The latter is defining a burgeoning body of literature on contemporary social movements, and I consider it to be pertinent to furthering analytical appreciation of utopianism, certainly in the singular context of Oroville. In the first section of this chapter, I examine the evolution of utopian practice and its theorization, outlining the new body of work on which I build in analyzing Oroville as a site of utopian practice. I also add new points of consideration for this literature, specifically developing on the analytical repertoire of the principle of hope that underscores much of it. In the second section, I explore the literature on prefigurative practice and its parallels with utopian practice. While I do not argue that prefigurative action is necessarily utopian, I do maintain that theorizations of contemporary utopian practice, specifically in the context of intentional communities, can be enriched by being approached analytically through a prefigurative lens. Given that these consist of strategic attempts at prefiguring new polities. In the third section, I explore the political relevance, similarities, and differences embedded in how both prefigurative social movements and intentional communities articulate alternatives to mainstream forms of socio political organization. Finally, I turn to the spiritual basis of the articulations of utopianism and community specific to Oroville. In the fourth section of this chapter, I delve into the uniquely spiritually prefigurative nature of utopian practice in the Oroville context. In the fifth, I explore how the founding spiritual repertoire of Oroville engenders a symbolic construction of community that enfolds diverse understandings and interpretations and fosters an anarchic communal utopian practice. The Evolution of Utopian Practice and Its Theorization Lyman Tower Sargent, the long-standing and present-day bibliographer of utopian scholarship, speaks of three faces of utopianism three avenues through which the diverse expressions of utopianism have been articulated in human history. One is literary, descriptions of fictitious, although sometimes familiarly situated, societies that present better alternatives to contemporary ones. Another is utopian social theory, which examines various roles of utopianism in society. Lastly, the only articulation that is enacted in an actual attempt to transform people and societies for the better, utopian practice. In recent years, a variety of social phenomena, protests, practices, performances, that actively seek to effect positive social change across realms from arts to politics have increasingly been framed through this praxis lens of utopian scholarship. Intentional communities were historically considered the locus of utopian practice and remain significant by virtue of their potential to experiment with the transformation of societies as whole entities.
albeit at a micro level. The framing of intentional communities as utopian experiments, however, is contentious for many, from academics to intentional community members themselves. This is largely because of the dominant identification of the concept of utopia with a fixed ideal of perfection, which many intentional community members feel they are far from, and its association with a detailed, predetermined blueprint towards which much sound criticism has been leveled. Thomas More coined the term utopia by combining the Greek words for good place, utopos, and no place, utopos. The implication being that utopia is an unattainable ideal, something that makes intentional communities as utopian experiments seem foolhardy. Furthermore, the paradoxical double entendre compromises both academic and public understandings of the potential and role of utopian practice in and for the advancement of human society. Contemporary utopian scholars, however, maintain that inadequacy lies not with the state of realization of these communal experiments, but rather in the, quote, mistaken reading of utopias as perfection-seeking, blueprinting, and desirous of perfection and finality, close quote. In the last several decades, the utopian has been re-evaluated and redefined in social theory and literary forms. There has been a radical move away from the idea of utopia as synonymous with perfection, fixity, and the intangible, towards the dynamic articulation of a utopian aspiration within and seeking alternatives to present mainstream conditions, or perfectibility rather than perfection. Literary utopias have emerged as critical utopias, utopian practice as transgressive utopias, and utopian social theory has focused on the role of utopianism in the education of desire for a better way of life. The concept of what could constitute a utopia became internally diverse and changeable, imperfect, reflexive, and self-critical in terms of form and content. Thus reformulated, utopian better reflects the practice and experience of intentional communities, certainly the experimental second wave intentional communities founded in the 1960s and 1970s, Orville among them. Of contemporary utopian communities such as Findhorn, Sargison emphasizes that these are not based on nor do they construct a blueprint for the ideal polity. On the contrary, there is, quote, no full stop to the process of politics in this utopianism. It is above all resistant to closure and it celebrates process over product, close quote. They stand in contrast to the first wave communal experiments of the 19th century that were largely based on blueprints provided by utopian social theorists and writers. Often, these were accompanied by city plans that would create the settings for such societies to be organized within. The perfectly planned city as the means to realizing the ideal society became a project of urban planners in the 1950s, when the mother first began imagining Orville, the most famous contemporary project being Brasilia. Key to this development in utopian conceptualization was the seminal work of Marxist utopian philosopher Ernst Bloch, The Principle of Hope, a work in three volumes, first published in German in 1954 and translated into English in 1986. According to Bloch, utopia is not something fixed or preconceived 
but something ever dynamic and anticipatory, embodied in what he refers to as the utopian function. The role of the utopian function is to continually reach into the not yet become. Therefore, the only relationship that the utopian function can have with a predefined utopia is to be corrective and critical of it. The latter is based on an inviolable future status quo born out of present conceptions, which by its nature the utopian function challenges given its ever forward orientation and evolution. Bloch advances the same argument in defining the relationship between utopian functions and ideals, stating that statics of the ideal predominates with an in itself already finished perfection, and it is precisely against this finished aspect that the utopian function has to prove its worth. He further challenges utopian ideals to prove their worth by being connected to potential embedded in existing reality, so that it is, quote, precisely this intended perfection, this wholly admitted anticipation, which makes the ideal accessible to utopian treatment, close quote. This forms the basis of the differentiation Bloch makes between abstract and concrete utopias, the latter being inextricably linked with the concept of the utopian function. He defines utopias that are abstract, whether literary or theoretical, as those that have no inherent connection with reality, quote, pure wishful thinking, which has discredited utopias for centuries, both in pragmatic political terms and in all other expressions of what is desirable, just as if every utopia were an abstract one. Close quote. By contrast, concrete utopias articulate with and are anticipatory of the development of tendencies or latencies existing in the present. They are spaces and settings in which the utopian function is actively mediating between aspiration and present conditions, being transcendent without transcendence. The concept of a concrete utopia has been key in defining hope movements social mobilizations for autonomy that arise from popular aspirations for alternative paradigms to statist and neoliberal development agendas, as well as economic experiments that prefigure alternatives to capitalism. The revolutionary development of utopian scholarship in the last 30 years, in which concrete utopia is defined as prescient but not predetermined, an articulation rooted in and transforming of the present in an evolutionary process, however compromised and contradictory, through the work of the utopian function, has significant implications for how we view, understand, and evaluate utopian practice. It is through this theoretical lens that I examine Orville as a utopian experiment. Pertinently, I find this lens to be congruent with the community's autochthonous ontological framework of integral yoga, which sought to hasten the evolution of consciousness through an applied anticipatory embodiment in the present. The mother conceived of Orville as an experiment dedicated to this process and purpose, something that continues to underpin the subjective self-understanding of the community by its members. I further qualify utopianism as conceived and practiced in the Orville context as prefigurative. For although the community does have founding ideals, their treatment, as Bloch says, is applied experimentation that recognizes process as generative of an ever-evolving outcome.
Before I delve into developing a theoretical framework for utopian practice that fuses with prefiguration, I add some new points of consideration for the relationship between hope and utopian practice, informed by the Orville context. A note on hope, disappointment, and criticism. Quote, It is a question of learning hope. Its work does not renounce. It requires people who throw themselves actively into what is becoming, to which they themselves belong. Ernst Bloch Quote, Utopia is a life of hope. We can hope, fail, and hope again. We can live with repeated failure and still improve the societies we build. Ruth Levitas Following Bloch's The Principle of Hope, hope features strongly in the new body of theoretical and ethnographic work on utopian practice. While hope is certainly a primary driving and sustaining force for a utopian endeavor, from autoethnographic observation and experience, I insist on adding the dimension of disappointment, which I have found to be key to fostering ongoing mobilization for social change within Oroville. I would go so far as to extrapolate from it the theory that it is the tension between these two forces, hope and disappointment, that engenders the dynamism at the core of grassroots, concrete utopian practice. Criticism is a natural ally to disappointment in this dynamic. Tom Moylan, among the contemporary scholars of utopianism, has defined some utopias as critical in both the, quote, enlightenment sense of critique, that is the expressions of oppositional thought, unveiling, debunking of both the genre itself and the historical situation, and in the nuclear sense of the critical mass, close quote. To this double meaning of critical, I suggest we add the dimension of self-critique, in order to better understand the subjective experiences of utopian practice in intentional communities, and thus complement our already existing understanding of what they represent, place-based, enacted critiques of the mainstream societies in which they are embedded, to and for which they seek to create alternatives. The dynamic of self-critique within intentional communities has already been highlighted. In her work, Sargison observes that intentional communities do not claim to be perfect and that their members are, quote, often excessively critical of their community. This is certainly true of Orville and I would argue is key to fueling a continued process of perfectibility while the fundamental, underlying, animating, and inspiring hope principle crucially serves to frame and activate disappointment to serve this process. In the Orville context, the ideals of the community, as outlined in its founding texts, the Orville Charter, to be a true Orvillian, and a dream, articulate and inspire the collective hope of the community. Yet, at the same time, they are a constant gauge against which Orvillians critique themselves and each other. Of hope, Bloch says, it is in love with success rather than failure. Yet Frederick Jameson points out that utopias, quote, have something to do with failure and tell us more about our own limits and weaknesses than they do about perfect societies. Sargison herself has remarked that they are, quote, a mirror to the present, designed to bring out flaws. Excessive criticism is a phenomenon 
that many within the Orville community consider damaging to the fabric of our society. And in my own opinion and experience, rightly so. However, it is important to note that an elective lack or active repression of questioning and critique in utopian community projects served to deny any human failings and was responsible for the perpetuation of unjust and unethical behavior within them. It is also worth highlighting that Orville has a culture of satire that offers many a welcome respite from the high expectations we place upon ourselves. Plays, skits, cartoons, videos and articles produced by Orvillians as a commentary on various aspects of our community have been common and long-standing vehicles through which we reflect on, critique and laugh about ourselves and our society. An example famous in the Orville context is the Academic Genius Brothers show, a skit series which has been ongoing since my childhood, exploring key contemporary issues and debates within the community. Significantly, the spiritual worldview of the Orville community plays a crucial role in framing and assists in weathering our disappointment with the human limitations and flaws that we Orvillians routinely face in ourselves and others in community life and development, as well as in its overarching course. These are understood to be symptomatic of the overarching stage of the spiritual consciousness in which humanity is presently caught. Importantly, because it is understood that this spiritual consciousness is in a process of evolution and that we can choose, and if we have joined Oroville, it is presumed have chosen to actively participate in it, this spiritual worldview is also key to sustaining hope. As such, it is crucial for prevailing within the project of Orville, in the face of what Sargison observes are the frustrating challenges of transgressive utopian practice. This corroborates similar observations made about the role of spirituality in other collective contexts, notably that spiritual practices have assisted in fighting burnout, political cynicism, and hopelessness in social movements. To be faced by individual and collective limitations in the face of attempting to embody high ideals is no easy undertaking. And Sargent rightly observes that intentional communities, due to their immersive nature, are a particularly intensive experience of this. Quote, Ultimately, utopianism is the transformation of everyday life. And intentional communities are particularly radical in that their members are willing to experiment with the transformation of their own lives. And all members of intentional communities must deal with this transformation every day. Close quote. While this challenging process provokes considerable self-criticism within intentional communities, Sargison also highlights that members see themselves as playing a transformative role, view their communities as spaces in which change is possible and can at the very least be explored. Being empowered to actively and intentionally shape and reshape lifestyles, practices, and forms of social organization through ongoing experimentation thus keeps hope alive through enactment. In the Orville context, this hope is embedded, legitimized, and sustained within a broader vision and commitment to Integral Yoga's ontology of spiritual evolution. Utopian Practice and Prefiguration One of the key theoretical and ethnographic contributions of this thesis is to further the collective theorization of utopian practice outlined above 
by qualifying it as prefigurative, and in the Orville context specifically, as spiritually prefigurative. I do so given that the practice of prefiguration is one in which a collective emulates in the present the attitudes, social relations, culture, and organization it envisions for the future through experimental and experiential means. Scholarship on prefiguration emerged from and remains focused on political practice, with a few divagations, notably into economic and environmental practices. Its conceptualization thus also stands to gain in breadth from this bridging with utopian practice. The term prefigurative was coined in 1970 by the cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead, an early endorser of the Orville Project, to herald the advent of a newly future-oriented prefigurative culture, one in which, quote, it will be the child and not the parent and grandparent that represents what is to come. In 1977, Carl Boggs used the term prefiguration to define, quote, the embodiment within the political practice of a movement of those forms of social relations, decision-making, culture, and human experience that are its ultimate goal. Following Boggs, early scholars of prefiguration conceptualized a broad spectrum of social movement practices as prefigurative. But in the last decade, the literature on prefiguration has been dominated by a narrow focus on the horizontal forms of organizing and decision-making employed in contemporary alter-globalization movements. This ethnographic focus is accompanied by a theoretical shift that considers only such strategic practices as prefigurative, as in those that would bring about political change, disregarding the role and significance of associated sociocultural lifestyle practices in prefiguring social movements' overarching goals. The omission is surprising, considering the recent history of new left social movements, which were precipitated and shaped by changes in culture and lifestyle, the association effectively captured in the feminist movement's iconic slogan, the personal is political. Analysis of how these movements have articulated a prefigurative politics also ignores this social dimension. Contemporary literature is so focused on strategic political practices that it even omits alternative, notably spiritual, practices that actively inform these, such as the moments of silence and meditation in decision-making assemblies noted by other academics. Thus, while in Chapter 6 of this thesis, I explore in detail a participatory decision-making process in Oroville, the classic choice of prefiguration scholars, I focus on spiritual practices that are employed within it. For these are key to articulating a prefigurative politics in the Orville context, that is, prefigurative of a spiritualized polity. In so doing, I revitalize early scholarship of prefiguration, which included the set of cultural practices that were associated with political mobilizations. The restrictive scope on strategic political practice is perhaps why prefiguration is barely even conceptually associated with utopianism. A few scholars of prefiguration mention in passing that prefigurative action embodies utopic or utopian alternatives. Rare are those who actually engage with contemporary theorizations of utopian practice in doing so. While I do not make the argument that prefigurative practice should de facto be considered utopian, prefiguration is central to how I understand utopian practice in the Orville context.
This is because in prefigurative practice, activists are, quote, intentionally prefigurative of the other worlds they would like to see. Using organizational means which reflect their desired ideals so that the struggle and the goal, the real and the ideal, become one in the present, despite, within, and transformative of the limitations of the latter. In this thesis, I examine aspects of Orville's political and economic organization, both their historical development and current practice, and how these have been strategically informed by and seek to embody the community's founding ideals in order to prefigure a spiritualized society. For example, in Chapter 8, I consider economic experiments that proved to be strategic in prefiguring the community's economic ideals by culminating in the establishment of a community institution whose organization embodies and engenders these ideals. My conceptualization of how utopian practice in Orville is prefigurative, however, reaches beyond the strategic, political and economic dimensions that I examine in this thesis. I consider it to be an overarching qualifier because, quote, to prefigure is to anticipate or enact some feature of an alternative world in the present, close quote. And the premise and practice of the Orville project is to prefigure an integral, alternative, spiritualized society. Other scholars of intentional communities are beginning to adopt the concept of prefiguration to describe these as well, given that they are radical, embodied exercise in redefining society according to alternative values of the present and for the future. Prefiguration, Utopianism, and Social Change Not all utopian practice is tied to political change in mainstream society. While prefigurative practice is expected to enact and engender such change. Even scholars who theorize a wider scope of practices than political movements as prefigurative consider this to be key to defining them as such. For example, while Yeats argues that prefiguration can refer either to alternative political mobilization or to alternative everyday practices, he upholds that these must be relevant beyond the bounds of the groups within which these are experimented. Quote, Prefiguration necessarily combines the experimental creating of alternatives within either mobilization-related or everyday activities with attempts to ensure their future political relevance. Both utopian communities and prefigurative politics are, however, criticized for being apolitical. Chantal Mouffe condemns prefigurative social movements for adopting an exodus approach from the public sphere. A common criticism of utopian communities is that they draw energy and activism away from working for social change in mainstream society, that they are insular and escapist projects. Yet, activists and scholars of each maintain that they are engaged in the articulation of new and alternative repertoires of social and political organization and practices. Quote, By their very existence, intentional communities broaden the choice of values and institutions for society as a whole, a welcome addition to any democratic society which upholds pluralism. Close quote. Intentional communities are noted as having made little known but significant contributions to the broader societies in which they are embedded, as harbingers of forward-looking practices born from and reflective of progressive values later to be adopted into the mainstream. <laughs> 
These were developed through what was effectively the politicization of their everyday lifestyle practices, leading Sargeson to remark that their members are to be reconceived as active citizens instead of dropouts. For example, New Harmony, the historical intentional community founded by Robert Owen in Indiana in 1814, is recognized as a pioneer of free public education and free public libraries open to men and women, which since have become United States institutions. Over the last 50 years, Orville has been a focal point for pioneering innovative forms of collective and economic organization, renewable technologies, sustainable architecture, educational practices, and social enterprise, with award-winning local, regional, national, and international reach and impact. The Oroville Earth Institute holds the UNESCO Chair of Earthen Architecture, researching and educating people worldwide in earthen building technologies. Tamil Nadu State textbooks have recently incorporated educational content on waste management from the Orville Social Enterprise Waste List, reaching millions of Tamil school children. I have heard several fellow Orvillians describe these as simply byproducts of the underlying spiritual mission of the community. And it is fascinating for me to observe that a spiritually inspired society gives rise to progressive practices, a correlation which, of course, cannot be indiscriminately generalized. This active role of spirituality in reshaping public life is especially interesting to consider given that a prevalent criticism of spiritual practice is that it renders individuals apolitical. Although of relevance to note is that academic work endorsing this critique is based on Buddhist practices such as mindfulness, which emphasize detachment from worldly life. By contrast, the spiritual worldview of integral yoga is one that sees the world as a realm to be divinized through intentional engagement and is key to giving rise in Orville to spiritually informed action across realms. This includes the community's political life, as explored in chapters 5 and 6 of this thesis. A core premise of the contemporary prefiguration scholars and activists who focus on alternative forms of organizing and decision-making in social movements is that such prefigurative politics articulate an alternative to the state. To ally with or make demands of the government, emancipation within, acceptance by or incorporation into current power structures, would thus invalidate their prefigurative nature. Orville, however, is formally enmeshed with the Indian government, something that almost unfailingly prompts skepticism and the question of co-optation in talks I have given in both academic and non-academic contexts. In Chapter 5 of this thesis, I consider the relationship between Orville and the Indian government, arriving at the unlikely conclusion that it may, in fact, be a government-enabled anarchy. This is an important, albeit controversial, dimension to examine for proponents of prefigurative projects, especially given that among the key pronouncements of political scholars that are critical of prefigurative movements is that they fail to produce lasting political change precisely due to a lack of engagement with existing institutions. In chapters 4 and 6, I consider the development and practice of Orville's internal governance, revealing the challenges faced in attempting to establish perennial forms of anarchist organizing in the face of an increasingly complex community. This trajectory and experience is relevant in light of questions as to how anarchist communities sustain and reproduce themselves and of the criticism 
of anarchist social movements such as Occupy Wall Street failing to do so. The integral, spiritually prefigurative nature of Orville's utopian practice. A key question for scholars of prefiguration is where does the political begin and end in the case of building alternatives? In Utopian Bodies and the Politics of Transgression, Sargison argues that alternative lifestyle practices in intentional communities are, quote, politicized partly because of their context, the fact that they occur in a consciously created and alternative space, and also by the consciousness of the actions themselves. I see Orville as belonging to and standing out from other prefigurative projects in that it is an integral exercise in prefiguration, in both the dictionary and the spiritualized or Bindonian use of the term. While most intentional communities focus on, even though they may not be restricted to, a particular aspect of collective living, for example, eco-villages who focus on environmentally sustainable lifestyles, and social or political movements typically engage with specific causes and demands, for example, political autonomy, Orville seeks to engage with all aspects of life in prefiguring society as a whole, and to do so spiritually, following Sri Aurobindo's iconic phrase, all life is yoga. Under this aspirational aegis, a multiplicity of pursuits are undertaken, from art to engineering, as well as the development of innovative and alternative communal practices, for example of governance, economics, and education. Each of these pursuits is to be engaged with consciousness in order to prompt a spiritually prefigurative process. It is important to note that there are no explicit protocols for doing so, for Integral Yoga is a fundamentally anarchist spirituality in that it recognizes and affirms that each individual has a unique spiritual path and practice. While these are today institutionalized to a certain extent, reformulation is common given the community's overarching experimental and evolutionary ethos and practice. This is consistent with Sargison's observation of utopian practice in intentional communities, which she describes as internally subversive, as well as flexible and resistant to permanence and order. It also echoes the inherently experimental and experiential nature of prefigurative practice. This flexible and open-ended political practice, which Sargison theorizes as part of a transgressive utopianism, is inscribed in Orville's founding political philosophy concept and ideal, and is deliberately designed to serve a spiritually prefigurative process of evolution. In 1972, just a few years after Orville was established, someone asked the mother, what political organization do you want for Orville? And she responded, a divine anarchy. She never defined a system of governance for the community, for she anticipated that this would constrain its capacity to develop itself in accordance with the progressive spiritualization of life which its members were to consciously participate in hastening. The kind of society that would emerge from this process could not be abstractly envisioned. It was to be elaborated in practice. It is this concretely utopian, embodied and anticipatory articulation with a spiritualized evolution that leads me to theorize Orville's utopian practice as spiritually prefigurative. Interestingly, this spiritually anticipatory dimension harks back to the original use of the term prefiguration, which has its roots in religion and refers to a prophetic foreshadowing. <laughs> 
The practice of Integral Yoga is to cultivate not only spiritual consciousness within, but also spiritual life without. By engaging in pursuits of worldly life with an applied spirituality, and thereby participating in transforming these. Thus the community has a wide range of activities, commercial and social enterprises, alternative schooling, environmental restoration, a vibrant artistic and cultural life that would not typically be considered political or spiritual. If the aspiration of Orvillians as a polity is an embodied individual and collective evolution of spiritual consciousness in everyday life, then any activity, a physical discipline, artistic production, political forum, in which they intentionally engage with the spiritually prefigurative process is fundamental to Orville's development as a spiritual polity. In the following paragraphs, I will elucidate the spiritually prefigurative nature of three aspects of community life, education, work, and art, and what Bloch would refer to as their utopian treatment. In so doing, I will also point to some of the challenges that such prefigurative treatment necessarily entails in attempting to embody a more spiritually evolved future into the limitations of the present. Education in any society is a key site of deliberate social reproduction, and alternative pedagogies have been an important feature of many intentional communities. Both Orville and Findhorn are notable educational centers. Orville has several primary and secondary schools, funded in part by the Indian Ministry of Human Resources Development, which engage and experiment with the pedagogical philosophy of integral education, based on integral yoga and initially developed at the Sri Aurobindo Ashram. The premise of integral education is to foster a spiritually conscious, values-based, well-rounded and self-directed development of the student. The objective is to form individuals who are aware of both the inner and outer dimensions and potentialities of education and of the significance of pursuing such personal development throughout their lives. This is relevant to realizing the ideal of Orville as a place of, quote, an unending education, constant progress, and a youth that never ages, as well as that of a society that builds on, quote, discoveries from without and from within, to prefigure a spiritualized future. While Orville has developed original pedagogical practices adopted internationally, such as awareness through the body, education has been a source of considerable contention within the community due to the perpetuation of mainstream educational practices within some of its schools, such as, for example, preparing students for Indian and international examinations in order to enable them to easily integrate into higher education institutions. Work in Oroville is another significant site for spiritual development, central to community life, given the founding statement that, quote, Oroville is for those who want to do the yoga of work. This meant that work was to be undertaken as a yogic practice through which individuals would progress spiritually while also participating in a transformation of the world by infusing consciousness into their fields of engagement. According to recent research, the ideals and understandings of spiritualized work are actively practiced by Aurovillians. While the flexible nature of work in the community, the ability to change professions, for instance, is both easy and commonplace, is celebrated for offering individuals opportunities to pursue their interests. There are also issues with people who lack competence for their chosen work 
nevertheless persevering with it. The fact that this provides them with an opportunity for self-development is valued by other members of the community. However, the social and economic cost to the collective of their occupying positions they do not adequately fill is also a source of dissatisfaction. Despite this, such situations are often not addressed due to a community culture of reticence in overruling individual members. Outside of the realm of work, and within it for some, creative pursuits are among the most popular self-development activities. Art has long played a central role in the utopian imaginary because it offers a space in which to challenge present conventions, envision and embody alternatives. The Burning Man Festival, a radical gathering held annually in the ephemeral Black Rock City, constructed for and disassembled after the event in the Nevada desert, is perhaps the largest and most popular contemporary collective exercise of this, and also draws significantly on spiritual repertoires. In Oroville, much artistic practice and performance is inspired by the body of literature on Antigua Yoga and by the community's ideals. For the township's 50th anniversary in 2018, Orvillian artists created multimedia works based on chapters of a key spiritual text, On the Way to Supermanhood. And a theater group adapted chapters of the same volume for stage performance. The community's ideal of human unity in diversity was symbolized and explored in a multidisciplinary community performance, Soul Encounters for the Orville Soul, which fused dance forms from various cultures and culminated in the Hatha Yoga sequence that represented the epitome of spiritualized physical embodiment. These two recent works are representative of a rich and commonplace legacy of artistic practice in Oroville, the arts thus constituting a significant realm of exploration in spiritual utopianism. As evidenced by these three pursuits, embodying consciousness is essential in defining them as spiritually prefigurative, something which will be explored in the context of Orville's participatory decision-making processes in Chapter 6. It is also central to the understanding of what it means to become Orvillian. I say become because Orvillian is perceived not simply as the formal status of community member, but as an ideal, that of a, quote, willing servitor of the divine consciousness, which many consider themselves to be only working towards, and which can thus itself be considered spiritually prefigurative in nature. Oroville as a Utopian Community Community is a term commonly evoked by and used to refer to such a wide spectrum of human associations that it is hard to define meaningfully. For this reason, it has been challenged as a basis of analysis, while its theorization has known several permutations. When I refer in this thesis to the Orville community, or community members, I mean the official members of Orville, those that hold the status of Orvillian, and I'm thus basing myself on a categorical definition of community. The term could be used, however, to refer to a wider demographic than its members, by including its employees and volunteers, for example, evoking early structural definitions of community that are based on social organization. I restrict myself to Orvillians in this thesis because of its focus on how community members have intentionally engaged with Orville's ideals and the development of the community's institutions. While other, more limited forms of membership exist, such as partner of an Orvillian or friend of Orville, these do not empower individuals to fully participate in shaping the community 
notably due to the fact that they can neither participate in communal decision-making nor manage Orville's enterprises or services. However, an academic exploration of whether and how the community's ideals shape the engagement of non-Orvillian individuals active within the township has yet to be undertaken and could yield significant insights, for example, for the social reproduction of utopian practice. As of August 2019, Orvillians number over 3,000 and are of 58 different nationalities. To embody such diversity is key to the utopian imaginary of Orville as a community. An early statement by the mother displayed on the landing page of Orville's website states, quote, Orville wants to be a universal town where men and women of all countries are able to live in peace and progressive harmony above all creeds, all politics, and all nationalities. The purpose of Oroville is to realize human unity." Close quote. While some joined the community in its early years, during which the mother was alive, and even at her behest, Oroville continually accepts new members. Some individuals choose to leave the community, sometimes to return. The category of Orvillian itself, therefore, contains a vastly diverse array of experiences of community membership, including many additional reasons beyond those highlighted here. It is not the objective of this thesis to investigate the composition of community in Orville or of these subjective experiences. This would entail an in-depth exploration of the micro and multi-dimensional aspects of community building, such as various forms and practices of association, the development of a felt sense of belonging, and the fostering of joint commitment. Such an investigation could, however, provide an excellent complement to this research by determining the role of interpersonal association for informing and sustaining the enactment of Orville's utopian practices, the development of its community institutions, which this thesis examines, in particular. The latter would be especially relevant given that Orville currently consists of a small, face-to-face -face society in which scholars of community note significant overlap between personal networks and community institutions. Overall, Examining processes of community building in intentional communities is surprisingly limited. Cantor's seminal work on commitment in intentional communities focused on the formal mechanisms that secured the commitment of individual members to the community, such as the commitment of financial resources, rather than affective dimensions such as resonance with the community's ideals or associative ones such as shared projects. Engagement with the wider body of research on community and intentional community scholarship could thus be valuable for furthering academic understandings in both fields. The theorization of community that I consider to be indispensable for this thesis is Cohen's symbolic construction of community, for it is key for understanding the anarchic nature of Orville's communal utopian practice. It offers an analytical lens through which we can understand how the ways in which Orvillians articulate with the community's ideals are both shared and internally contested. This unity and diversity, a core principle in Sri Aurobindo's body of work, is one of Orville's ideals of community. In the symbolic construction of community, Cohen outlined a new way of defining community based on meaning rather than social organization, challenging previous structural conceptualizations. Rather than defining a community by its external form and qualifiers, he proposed that it be understood through the subjective experience of its members. <laughs> 
stating, quote, the quintessential referent of community is that its members make, or believe they make, a similar sense of things, either generally or with respect to specific and significant interests, and further, that they think that that sense may differ from one made elsewhere, close quote. Cohen argued that a repertoire of symbols held in common is what enables members to construct and maintain a sense of community. However, he specified that, quote, the sharing of the symbol is not necessarily the sharing of the meaning. A community could contain a diversity of interpretations and relationships to communal symbols, so that it effectively, quote, incorporates and encloses difference. This is particularly important to consider in studying intentional communities, in which a uniformity of views, attitudes, values, and practices, achieved by the submission of individuals to the collective, is often presumed. This may reflect the social experiments of blueprinted utopian communities and ones organized around charismatic leaders, including Indian gurus, such as Twin Oaks, in its early incarnation as a behaviorist community based on the behavioral psychologist B.F. Skinner's utopian novel Walden II, or Rajneeshpuram, described in Chapter 3. However, it cannot be transposed to other communal experiments, such as Orville, that are based on anarchic and consensual principles of participation. Orville is not an entirely non-prescriptive utopian endeavor in that it does have founding ideals, and even a model for a city plan, determined by a founding figure who is recognized as a spiritual guru. While there was no strictly specified societal blueprint for Orville to realize, the mother did draft a dream in 1954 which envisioned an ideal society. She also wrote a short, four-point charter for the community, the Orville Charter, in 1968, and a guiding document for individual members, to be a true Orvillian, in 1970. She even made specific provisos for certain aspects of the community's collective organization, notably in the sphere of economy, to which chapter 6 and 7 of this thesis are dedicated. These elements provide the basis on which Orville enacts a prefigurative utopianism. They have and continue to foster a prefigurative utopian practice by providing what Cohen would refer to as a shared, symbolic repertoire that community members are committed to and around which they mobilize, individually and collectively, to embody a more spiritualized society. The intentional absence of a defined approach to realizing Orville's ideals has fostered a plural and experimental environment bound beyond differences in its shared commitment to the project of Orville, as Cohen's framework theorizes. While the three foundational documents of the community cited above, the Orville Charter, a dream, and to be a true Orvillian, are related to by Orvillians as inspirational texts and not dogmatic decrees, there is a trend of using specific statements made by the mother regarding Orville during its founding years to lend authority to certain views and projects. This echoes research on community based on Cohen's work that explores the invocation of communal ideals for opposing agendas. Whether and how these now historical statements should be applied and evaluated in the community's current contexts is frequently questioned. Notably, the community's leading archivist has pointed out that even within the short period in which the mother was actively envisioning Orville, her statements on the community's purpose demonstrate a significant evolution and conceptualization. 
Opinions are also contested about how the very figure of the mother should be related to, as will be revealed in an ethnographic rendering of Orville's participatory decision-making process in Chapter 6. The chapter also explores how certain forms of invoking and interacting with her statements and writings on Orville are disputed. Chapter 7 examines the articulation and economic administration, Chapter 8 in mobilizing prefigurative experiments. A new theoretical approach. I build on the bodies of work on utopian practice and prefiguration outlined in this chapter in examining Orville as a uniquely spiritually prefigurative utopian experiment. Previous academic work on Orville has addressed its utopian dimension through a static rather than dynamic lens by comparing the status and progress of the project with its founding ideals and pointing out discrepancies. Little has been done to examine whether and how the community's founding ideals are inspiring the concrete development of the Orville experiment, which is the crux of my research. Scholars have focused instead on how individuals are inspired by and relate to Orville's ideals in their personal lives and how they use these as frameworks through which to construct meaning around community life. Whereas attention has already been placed on analyzing different systems within the community, such as its economy or overall organization, the reflexive processes and agency with which Orvillians shape these systems and how these are informed by and embody utopian aspirations have not been duly explored. This articulation is the very phenomenon I consider relevant for developing an understanding of a prefigurative utopian practice and for contemporary utopian practice tout court. For Orville does not rely on establishing a predetermined utopian societal model as the first wave of blueprinting utopian communities did. It attempts to prefigure modes of social organization that can foster a spiritualized society in a perpetual learning process dedicated to conscious evolution.